Mikeneko is the ultimate VTuber. Let me explain. One of but many dark truths in VTubing is that fans want to be lied to at most or live in ignorance at least, whether they realize it or not. Not many people think about this, but they want to be kept into this fantasy that the VTuber they like is a good person whose only flaws are those that make her more entertaining or quirky, or at least worded in a way that's cuter. What's that? Your only flaw is that you're a lazy bean or you're up front or you're an airhead? Well, sometimes these traits, while cute to the audience, can have negative consequences to the agency or generally people around them. It's never in a fan's mind that the creator they support would be a flawed person who might negatively affect the places and people around them, or that at worst, they're actually horrible people. Of course, this culture is everywhere. Every person whose career involves showing oneself always have to have this seeming like a pleasant person sort of principle. That's what PR is for, hide the bad stuff and show only the good stuff so people keep supporting you. But in the VTuber industry, in my opinion, it's a bit different. It's worse, there's this certain veil of toxic positivity and desperation to keep up appearances, or wanting to seem like a good person. Which is why VTubers going mask off is a little bit more impactful and cancel worthy than your average Twitch streamer who everyone kinda knew was somewhat of an ass already. Whereas in general streaming culture on Twitch, some people are more upfront about how not good of a role model they are. Good role model being subjective to a certain extent, of course. But this isn't even a VTuber exclusive thing. Again, it's just more prominent in VTubing and it heavily depends on where you stand in the industry. This is a place where it's too easy to objectify people because the characters in front of their screens don't look human. They're drawings that resemble human. And because of that, a lot of people fall to the trap of treating the VTubers as caricatures or tropes of whatever character they are playing. But sometimes there can be instances where the VTuber isn't playing a character or even an exaggerated version of themselves. They are just themselves, showing off who they really are on screen under the impression that they are a character. It's a flash of brilliance, honestly, it's one of the things that make VTubing good. Of course, in many instances, this is actually a good thing. Makes it so that you are just you. You're streaming as yourself, no stresses and overthinking for how you want to portray yourself. And if you're bold enough, you can even say it as an excuse when you say or do an oopsie. But in some instances, this is a bad thing. Ladies and gentlemen, you recognize the person on the thumbnail. You know who she is, her story, what she represents in VTubing, and if you don't, you're about to find out. Because despite all the many videos and Twitter threads there are of her, I assure you, I don't even think you're caught up to everything that happened. Hell, I don't even know if I am, but I sure as hell am gonna try. This is the lore of a woman who goes by many names. Uruharusha, Amemiya Nazuna, Mikeneko, and allegedly, Ruki Yuruno from Waktor. Yes, that Waktor. Come join me, Anon, as I open my book of history and tell you the absolute dumpster fire that is... Before we continue the video, some of you might have noticed that I no longer have the girl. This smoking hot babe that I pilot like a biological Gundam? Well, it's because I freed her. She has her own channel where she does all sorts of things. Go follow Tsukigata News. Her links will be in the description. I promise you, you are not going to want to miss her. The third group of VTubers under Hololive's belt was a game changer for the company. It was the first time group cohesion and identity was really ever formed. It was the group that also has the biggest overall success in the agency. Uruharusha was part of this group, and she used to be one of the most popular and beloved VTubers in the industry. In fact, she is still the record holder of the world's biggest super chat earner, and keeping that record after literally two years is impressive considering Aqua held the largest VTuber graduation and general stream ever. And Coco is the monster that made super chats a culture to begin with. Right now, the person behind Rusha is just as popular as ever. In fact, even more so, I'd argue, but for the wrong reasons. She was VTubing's best and brightest GFE VTuber. And now she's still VTubing's best and brightest GFE VTuber. But she has become something of a lol cow herself. And while you would think that she has always been a lol cow, many people would argue that she still hasn't reached that point until recent happenings. So now I recite to you the ancient scripture, starting off with... 
Uraha Rusha got terminated on February of 2022 for essentially breaching NDAs, according to Hololive. It was a tough and shocking time for Hololive and VTuber fans everywhere. And the cause of this? A male. Grown, hairy ass, penis having, featherless biped. It all began on a simple collaboration with Sakura Miko. On Rusha's screen, a little message tab appeared, implying something of a relationship wherein they live together. Or at least a relationship intimate and important enough that they'd make the other party aware that they're going back home. Gasp! Scandalous! The person in this screenshot is a very famous singer, Mafu Mafu, a content creator who also has a very parasocial audience, who is almost on par with the dedication of Rusha's fans, for better or worse. Now, there are interesting details to this specific part of the story, like the fact that even Mafu Mafu's fans were upset at the situation, where they quite literally sat at voice calls just pissing and crying, and Rusha fans were doing the same. There was also the fact that there were already previous suspicions that they might have been living together as well. This suspicion was back in 2018, before the Rusha character. But that's not what's important. I made a video a few years back covering the whole situation, so if you'd like to get up to speed, the video's right here. What's important though, is that Rusha got fired because she leaked stuff she shouldn't have leaked. Mind you, at first, Coverporp actually originally defended Rusha and asked Unicorn to shut the fuck up and deal with the fact if she had a relationship, and Mafu Mafu and Rusha denies that they were in any sort of relationship at all, more specifically, that they were living together. Take note of this denial, because Rusha's friends, which include Kore Kore, was trying to dispel the rumor that they were even together. How Mafu Mafu once took a step further and said that Rusha had been feeling a one-sided love with him back in 2020. Eventually though, Rusha and Mafu Mafu made a mutual decision that they will not be engaging with each other any longer for the sake of their careers going forward. But bunny fucker, excuse me, I'm new and I don't know the lore. So yeah, she got exposed as potentially having a boyfriend. How does that connect? And where is the mental illness allegations coming from? Well, she got fired from Hololive, again for apparently spreading false information to third parties, many of which assumed was people like Kore Kore who was her friend. We don't know any specifics aside from what Covercorp shared with us and from what we can speculate. There was a little back and forth between her and Covercorp shortly some time later where Rusha made a statement pointing out the mistakes on the official termination letter which led to the fall of her reputation and that apparently this statement was approved by Hololive and, and then Hololive responding back saying that they didn't say that, it doesn't matter right now. What matters right now is that this whole thing exposed the inner workings of this woman. Because throughout the drama, many worrying instances greatly worried fans who just wanted her to get better. For example, she just can't stop responding to trolls and antis. She just keeps going on and on, spurging on Twitter. There was an entire cryptic thing on her twitcast where she implied suicide. She, she also kept saying how Hololive management and her senpais and her colleagues were bullying her and that she wanted to take revenge on them and quote, make them suffer 13 reasons why style, and I think that's pretty fucked up. At the time, however, not everyone, but still a lot of people, construed a lot of this as just the ramblings of a woman who lost everything. Someone who was super upset and was blabbering things she didn't mean. So people forgave her, didn't take the bad things she said or wanted to do at face value and just wanted what's best for her, to just eventually move on from this and take care of her mental health. <laughs> Someone as infamous as Rusha isn't gonna go down the path of irrelevancy for as long as there is blood in her body and that there are people that want to touch that body, on that blood, and put her blood in their body. That's how respectably powerful she is. The indie era for Rusha, now named Mikineko, or Michael as we will refer to her going forward, started off really strong. Girl was blitzing through her subscriber count like she was Germany back in 1939. She retained her viewer base and her super chatters for a significant part. They choose to believe in Michael because, of course, she wouldn't dare lie about her relationship like that. Michael isn't that kind of person. But she wasn't free from drama. Because Michael became the prime target for shit stirrers over in Japan who just wanted to see lol cow squirt that milk. Something that continues till this day. Shit stirrers and trolls didn't just include random people from 2chan though, it also included other content creators. Or at least that's what she'd say. 
because her and another VTuber somewhere along this time actually entered a bit of a digital brawl. One thing you should know about Michael is that she is a little bit trigger happy when it comes to threatening legal action or if you're in Japan, actually pursuing legal action. And from what we've seen so far, it's for good reason sometimes, like hard doxing attempts, genuine slander, disinformation, but for other times, it's for pretty stupid shit. Michael apparently hired eight lawyers to deal with something that is, according to her, an invasion of her privacy and four other grievous crimes. She thought these were certain statements worth suing for. This woman thought that hiring eight lawyers was worth this. Of course, there could be a whole lot of missing context for this. She could have been trying to argue a deeper point, and to certain extents, the charges that she's filing did actually happen to her. Maybe not the copyright part, I don't know what that's supposed to be. But according to the court report, the fact that these lawyers or herself might have used the weakest examples of how any of the charges were legitimate is baffling to me. She hired eight lawyers, bro, and she lost! She lost! But what happens when she gets hit by the same thing but by a different challenger? It all started when Michael casually stated in a stream that a particular independent streamer shit talked her to a drama tuber, and then her fans started putting two and two together and concluded that it was a particular streamer named Delotaya, the green haired cinnamon roll that everybody formerly knew as Mano Alloway, which also had a really tough drama back in 2020. In response to this, Delutaya said she doesn't remember any of this happening, which to me is an interesting way to word things, and she contacted Michael to clear up any misunderstanding. But Michael was not having any of it. She says she has video evidence and did not respond. The only way this was going to get settled were through lawyers, and just in case this turns into some sort of legal mess. Michael even went as far as blocking her on Twitter, and because Delotaya can't reach her, she made a statement publicly, essentially saying that Michael outright refuses to communicate with her and that this is her side of the story. Michael was who we've last heard of this encounter though, as she later states that she was never in any contact with any drama tuber, that her name is now so tarnished that it's everyone's playtime to just get her down. There was never any mention of this situation ever again. But what's the purpose or the lesson in explaining this to you? Well, simply put, Michael knows she's being targeted by people and baited by people. I think that much is true. People use her name all the time. The problem is, it seems, not saying that this is the case, is that she considers all oppositions against her to be part of that harassment campaign. Even people who just wanted to have a conversation, deal with constructive criticism, or, or even just talking about her in platforms that's nowhere near her, as we'll soon figure out as we go along this video. This was just the early sign. Maybe it's understandable, maybe it's not. Considering what happened to her would traumatize anyone, and that she just wanted to have peace, maybe it's easy to develop such a negative mindset. To a certain point, I'd even call it understandable and know where she's coming from. But disregarding what many of my community thinks is too nice to someone, the possibility is there that she has always had this sort of mindset for a while now even before and during Hololive. The reaction to the Delotaya and Michael drama was basically that of concern for both parties. VTuber fans in general, at least here in the English side of things, were really only sad for both of them and wanted them to stop fighting. Because at this time, people still liked both VTubers and they were aware that both also had their fair share of mental issues and also got booted from the same company. It was somewhat hoped that they would find common ground and bond over the experience regardless on whose exit was worse. But all of these worries would be washed away. Because we finally have some good news. For now. The legal protection, the reputational elevation. A new community, a brand new start with a company that's better in all ways but numbers than Hololive. Let's welcome her transition into V Shoujo as Amemiya Nazuna. A lot of people speculated that it was Kason that introduced Michael into V Shoujo, and it makes a lot of sense. There was literally no one in V Shoujo that had a connection to Rusha other than Kason. Especially because V Shoujo was English and Michael barely knows how to speak it. Coco was also a former Hololive member who also got buttfucked by Cover Corp from the whole Coco Taiwan war. Remake of that whole situation soon. What's interesting though was the fact that the acquisition was relatively quick. Rusha got terminated on February of 2022. 
Amimiya Nazuna came into V Shoujo at July of 2022, leaving a rapid five months for V Shoujo to get her assets, get her model, and put her in the trailer and do all sorts of logistics to help her transition into the company. It's why I think V Shoujo definitely likes to put their finger on the pulse for any large scale graduations or leaks from Hololive and Niji Sanji, and then later scooping them up for a boost in PR. I think that's pretty based and cool, by the way, to compete with your competitors like that. But bringing in Michael may have been more so a short-term benefit than anything particularly productive for V Shoujo overall. Let's get things out of the way. Nazuna got good numbers. On 2022, she averages 3 to 4k viewers. On 2023, she averages 2 to 3k viewers. But as Mikinek on YouTube, she hits double, triple, or quadruple that number depending on what she does and at what time constantly. So considering she has way more numbers in general over on YouTube than Twitch, and the fact that she most likely earns more money here, I think it's fair to assess that she's significantly more invested on her personal brand than over in V Shoujo. And because of that, one has to wonder why she even joined V Shoujo in the first place. Like, the real deep reason. Many people speculate multiple reasons. She may have joined due to legal protection. Maybe that veil of PR, the potential networking and business opportunities that she may get from V Shoujo. Maybe even the idea that she can have a brand new community far away from her traditional ties. I may have missed a few things, but in general, I think these reasons could be true and the rationale behind them is valid. But I suppose none of this matters too much now, because Nazuna was not really even as active as Nazuna, and didn't accomplish that much aside from V Shoujo's 3D concert. Looking at the times she streams, she got real active on the middle of 2023, but aside from that, she only streams in her account like 9 times a month or something, which isn't necessarily bad, but when you input the fact that she basically have retired her character at the end of 2023, we can paint a picture on where her content priority is at. And in the early months of that year, she also got another VTuble model on her personal brand. But the reception to this model was mixed, at least here in the EN side of things. On one hand, hell yeah, it looks like Rusha. She's taking back her identity, going as far as to make it similar to her Hololive model, but with the Mickey and Echo colors. On the other hand, People were feeling weird that having very Rusha elements in the art and making it so similar was some sort of signal from her that she hasn't let go. And to a certain extent, I agreed with it. I feel like the previous model was a good attempt to make a separate brand for herself. I don't personally have any issues with VTubers getting their old artists to do their new models, but if you go out of your way to make it look like your old model, it's interesting to say the least. There's nothing necessarily wrong with it, I just think it means something, whether that meaning be good or bad. That or the mama just has the same face syndrome thing that a lot of artists have. I mean, it's not the first time she drew someone that looked similar to Rusha. But regardless of these sentiments, the new model reveal was still a massive success. It sparked conversation of what precedents this would set for V Shoujo and the Japanese VTuber industry, but her fans liked it especially those who still saw Michael as Rusha. Oh, and she also announced that she would be joining a voice acting company called Voice Ore, and her new moniker there is Koitoria. She actually did a small gig as well. She played this blonde elf character in this one anime. So that's two agencies that she's working for, and that's three personas that she's taken up online. Now, maybe she got stretched too thin. Maybe she didn't see the point of still being in V Shoujo. Maybe even V Shoujo asked her to leave, but whatever the case, Amimiya Nazuna left V Shoujo on December 2023, following an indefinite hiatus that she announced in the middle of that year. Technically, she graduated, but she's still keeping the IP because that's V Shoujo's policy. Now, she's back to being fully indie. She's still Michael, Nazuna, and Koitoria. It's the start of the new year, and if I'm gonna be honest, despite the whole weird thing with Nazuna, I would say it was a relatively decent year for Michael. There wasn't any drama that was too big. She got into the voice acting agency and even landed a role already. Nazuna as an IP is still hers, and the new model, despite the initial shock, was still very successful. Uh, oh, and I guess she got kicked off of an Apex tournament back in August of 2023 with male content creators. Seriously though. She got kicked out of an Apex Legends tournament and her teammates decided to drop out with her like the real Giga Chats that they are. No official reason was given, not even her and the teammates apparently knew. 
The two most speculated reasons are that either Hololive might have raised the issue since a Holostars member was participating, or that her unicorns caused a lot of trouble for the org because there were people that was super upset that she dared collab with males. At the end of the day, it hurts. Getting barred from opportunities like that, it sucks. I would know, I think most content creators know how that feels like, but it's a tournament. People's gonna forget about it in a month, it's not that important, but she really wanted to, I guess. Let's hope that 2024 would be good for her. 2024 was not good for Michael, brother. In fact, as I am making the script, there's currently rumors circulating that she's making fun of Minato Aqua's graduation. Apparently, she wasn't, and people are taking things out of context again. Anyway, the start of the year was probably the worst it could get for her because it alleged many things, and it's probably what a lot of people outside the VTubing industry currently knows her as, aside from that one time she got fired from Hololive. Remember what we talked about earlier when Mafu Mafu and Rusha was in a relationship and both parties really did their best to deny it? Well, it turns out it was all a lie and that the initial speculation was true. Mikineko and Mafu Mafu was in a relationship. Gasp! Scandalous! Not only that, they were married. Gasp. Scandalous. Not only that, but Rusha is also an alleged domestic abuser. Gasp. Scandal. Okay, seriously, this is kind of fucked up. We have some serious allegations in here, so let me try and start from the very beginning. It all started when this gossip magazine started alleging and leaking out the fact that Mafu Mafu and Rusha was in a relationship. The popularity and surging interest of this one magazine clip prompted a response from Mafu Mafu himself, leading him to word out the details of the situation in a blog post from his own website. The post itself is a bit long, so I'll summarize it. Mafu confirms that he was married to Michael. They started dating in 2021 and divorced in July of 2022. They dated and married in one year, man. Says he doesn't want to lie anymore and is sorry that this may be shocking. Alleges that Michael was a massive manipulator and gaslighter. The relationship was super unhealthy to a point that Mafu would just panically check his phone every few hours because the girl was just that crazy about not getting prompt replies. He thought that this was normal in a relationship because he was never in one before. Bought a house for them to live together in an attempt to fix whatever the problem she had was which only happened because Mafu expressed the desire to divorce her and she begged him not to. While Michael stayed at the new house, Mafu Mafu was renting an apartment because Rusha wanted to keep him away. Again, even though Mafu bought the house. Michael then started slandering him online which prompted Mafu Mafu to tell her to stop doing that via a lawyer and she kept going anyway. Michael did not want to announce their relationship publicly because it would cause drama which caused him a lot of stress and left him no room to address the problems. He discovered from another person that Michael was cheating on him. This person approached Mafu to confess and that apparently he didn't even know that they were in a relationship. He got a lot of slander and harassment online saying that he was an abuser and a pet murderer which he later discovered was actually Michael's doing the whole time and now Mafu is suing her because of everything. So just in a span of a single day, we got a Michael that was just dumb and crazy to a Michael that was dumb, crazy and malicious. Allegedly, there was a follow-up stream with a drama tuber where Mafu Mafu essentially shows pictures and proof of what the living situation looks like for him and Michael, but looking back at it, it was out of context and nothing really damning. It was funny, but not too damning. Even the allegations themselves, if they had even a crumb of truth to it, was bad on Rusha. And Rusha would actually respond to this sometime later. She confirms that yes, it is her that Mafu married and divorced. She denies that she had been in a relationship with that guy that approached Mafu and confessed on, saying that they've never even met each other online and that their chat was supposed to be just them joking. She admits that she kept suspecting and harassing him about this, but says that she suspects him to be cheating for a good reason. Michael admits to actually be publicly slandering him on the internet, and her excuse is that sorry I got fired from my agency and I was in a dark place, and that yes, the lawsuit is real. She plans to counter sue him because of the above lawsuit saying that it was too much of a response. She tries to clear up the whole pet murderer thing saying that she's not one and it's a little misunderstanding. Now, obviously I'm simplifying a lot of things. 
There are some other details such as Michael alleging that Mafumafu is spreading rumors about how an ex-partners of hers got her pregnant and was abusing her which resulted in her current behavior and that aside from Mafu's lawsuit being too much, Michael tried to claim that a lot of the facts in Mafu's lawsuit was incorrect and that's why she felt justified in making the countersuit and among many other things. Again, I'm simplifying this for the sake of brevity. There's countless of videos going through this particular situation already. So for this part of her story, you may refer to those. Now, it's a bit of a mess, as you can tell. Despite the lack of concrete evidence from both, more people are on Mafu's side because Michael has a track record of being super crazy and just making shit up. She's not the most reliable narrator. In fact, she's the least trusted narrator. Michael would actually fucking sue Mafu Mafu again for appearing on that Konekori stream where he addressed these things. So, yeah, it's a lot of lawsuits uh, she's initiated. And even if she was telling the truth, nobody would suspect that thing because very few people trust her anymore aside from her most loyal simps. Some of her simps did wake up though. There's this one who was really upset. <laughs> Jesus Takashi, maybe pursue sex from someone without mental illness. It was at this moment that Hololive and V Shoujo breathed a sigh of relief that Rusha was no longer part of their company. It was at this moment that she achieved a reputation that far surpassed whatever bad sentiments people had against her before. Oh, what will happen to her budding career at Voice Ore? What will happen to her channel as Mikeneko? Nothing. Literally nothing, bro. She lost subs, but nothing too significant that would warrant a downfall. Say what you want about Michael, she is far from irrelevant. And her reputation, despite it almost being universally bad right now, is actually working in favor for her and her type of content. See, Michael is a GFE VTuber, someone that pretends to be your girlfriend for content. And there's this special type of marriage of being a GFE creator and having a bad reputation. If you have a bad reputation, there's nobody you can count on or will support you, except for your fans. The more desperate you are for validation or some semblance of emotional support, the more you will double down into doing GFE because what else do you have? And the more you're serious at doing GFE, the more support you will get from your core audience. At that point, the bad reputation around you is more so a filter than anything else. You become an underdog to your fan base. It's you and your audience against the world sort of shit. It's actually interesting, the sort of case study you can extract from Michael's story. And I think that's actually a huge part as to why she is as relevant as ever. Pair that up with a fan base that have already dumped and sunk in so much love, effort, and money into her, then you get the most loyal soldiers out there that will never leave her, even if she went out there and actually, with hard evidence, murder somebody. In fact, she cares so little at this point about the traditions of VTubing that after two weeks of the Mafu Mafu situation, she decided to revive Ame Miya Nazuna and said that she'll try to stream there a couple times a week. Again, Technically, she is allowed to do this because V Shoujo let her keep her IP, but one has to wonder, why? Like, whatever the reason is, I can't help but respect it. The sheer absolute drive of this woman to survive and make content, to keep herself relevant, to use all that is within her disposal to just do what she needs to do, the brazenness of it all. It's so genuinely baffling to a point that I actually respect it. Of course, the situation doesn't end here. Uh, let's get serious for a bit. A month after the initial situation came up, a friend of Michael made something of a haunting tweet saying that she attempted on her life by overdosing. The reason is that the hate was getting to her. There were a lot of people making memes and all sorts of stuff that she found it really not likable. But after a while, that friend posted a tweet saying that she regrets posting that tweet because she made it while she was panicking and it actually worsened Rusha's situation and hers by inviting trolls. Rusha would then tweet out saying that this attempt happened because of the stress from the Mafu Mafu situation because everyone and everything was going against her. She had a flashback, overdosed, and was taken to the hospital before anything serious happened, reaffirming that the harassment worsened because of this. Not only that, but a mixer would even join in on the hate wagon and try to expose or humiliate Michael for trying to avail their services. Not only that, Voice Ori, the agency that hired her to be part of their agency, 
dissolved, leaving her no more options to make money or extend to that side of the entertainment industry. What I'm trying to say in all of this is that Michael is not having a good time. And I feel bad for her, I really do. Regardless if the domestic abuser situation was true, nobody should be going through problems to the extent that she is going through. Maybe she brought it upon herself, I don't know. I feel like I don't have the authority nor the heart to really confidently say that. But what I do know is that she does keep stumbling into these problems. And also, a lot of the people she accidentally comes across. There is a lot of disinformation hashtag hijacking by a lot of trolls and former fans. And some of them would even use Michael's hashtag and twist it. Upon learning of this, Michael changed her hashtag into something else that she previously used. But this hashtag was used by another significantly smaller VTuber who ended up changing her hashtag because she didn't want her community to catch the flack. And when Michael was informed of this, she decided to hand wave it off and do it anyway. She only apologized and changed her mind when this moment got a massive 75 million views on Twitter and was used as ammunition to criticize her character even further, because it's a shitty thing to do. This situation was escalated by Chinami, a former Niji Sanji member who decided to chip in, suggesting that Michael should use her hashtag instead as a way of like, you know, daring challenging her to do it. Obviously, JP VTubing had a lot of fun with this interaction, to which Michael actually decided to cry about it on stream and thought of trademarking the tag she intended to hijack so it can be exclusively used by her. Again, the Japanese netizens have certain opinions to say. A lot of things to say, even. She is basically, in this period of time, VTubing's biggest lol cow, and it's not even close. Her name is a gold mine for content and goofs and sadness and depression and genuinely, like, depressing shit to look at. Her very presence outside her echo chamber is ridiculed and mocked. Her friends are seemingly thinning, opportunities probably even more so. She keeps getting baited for reactions and it's a mess nobody wants to deal with. And yet, she trudges on. I want you all to understand first that Michael's personal life is her own. None of us ever meant to peer into this woman's personal affairs. In fact, none of us should have. It's really unfortunate for her and her fans to have ended up the way that she is. She didn't mean any of this to happen. But after the unalive attempt and the revelation that she was an alleged domestic abuser, something changed in Michael. At this point, she was more well known for her controversies more than she was known for her great career in Hololive. But V Shoujo and Hololive aren't the only two things that Mikineko is a part of, it seems. Because on June 2016, Michael posted a little bit of a teaser where she showcased herself speaking Spanish. A very innocent upload. She does it sometimes, to other demographics. It seems like she was just experimenting, trying to reach out to demographics beyond her English, Japanese, and Chinese fans. Yes, she has Chinese fans. She opened a Bilibili account somewhere and is, you know, somewhat active. Now, a little bit of context as to why this got people asking questions, even a little bit. There is a VTuber agency named Waktor, which is by far the worst sort out there. An entire history of hard doxing their own talents, causing one of them to almost kill herself, almost malicious mismanagement, among many other things. I made a documentary about their exploits, so if you want to get up to speed, you can check it up there. But essentially, what Waktor is known for, aside from how terrible they are, is that they are a Japanese agency that really hit it off with the Spanish-speaking market, to a point that their Spanish speakers are actually the biggest VTubers in the agency. In fact, they are the only Japanese VTuber agency to actually achieve this sort of popularity in that audience. And in this year, a rebranded Waktor launched a talent named Ruki Yoruno that almost sounds like Rusia. So some people made vague connections that this perhaps could be her. And if Michael was taking voice acting classes or lessons, she may have intentionally made that shift in her voice as Ruki to throw people off. I will let you hear this. <laughs> Sigi 
アルな生活感ですがお許しくださいまあお話を戻しますとわからない人もいると思うので簡単に説明しますね VTuber 特有の配信後の感想タグというものがありましてその感想タグがちょっと私がまあ人とかぶってしまったことで少し前に炎上してしまいましたお騒がせしてしまって大変申し訳ございませんまあ再生数を稼ぎたい人やまあ叩いてやりたい The difference is there, you can notice it. It's only a little bit, but it sounds sort of similar to Michael, right? Of course, more sensible people like me thought that this is probably not the case. Sometimes people sound similar, but unless we have some sort of confirmation or even soft confirmation, we can't really say anything. That was until Ruki Yuruno made an oopsie. Where her OBS screen accidentally showed an ending screen similar to Michael's, which is the soft confirmation we needed, honestly. Now, the possibility of Michael being rookie is so high that even I run with the story that it's basically true at this point. Yuruno is actually relatively active, streaming almost every day. As of this moment, there's a lot of debate and attempts at alibis to prove that the two are completely different people, but there's nothing conclusive that it isn't Michael and nothing conclusive that it is, aside from that one ending screen yab. But it was more than enough for people to conclude that it's basically her. Which leads us to ask, why? Why join one of the worst, if not the worst, VTuber agencies out there? Like, I don't understand what reason could there be? Why do all of this? And to add another questionable decision, Michael got bullied in a game called Raph to a point of almost crying. She was not invited to an exclusive Rust event, but she heavily insisted. She even begged her friend to get her invited, and she did. Then she started attention seeking off of the biggest streamer in the server, going as far as to betray her team only to end up as a slave to the other team. And then ending up being shunned and hated by the team who originally took her in. The team that she defected to treated her harshly because she's a lol cow and she likes to milk them laws until she ended up being alone. There's a green text that summarizes the event, and there's a few things that requires a bit of correction and context, but overall, I think you get the bigger picture. Pause the video if you want. So, why do this to herself? She was uninvited, and it's trust. A game that has one of the most cruelest communities ever, and she wanted to get in it? At that point, she was just begging to be bullied. Maybe she wanted to have fun, hang around with other streamers, enjoy the company of others, but why in a place and an event that you're explicitly not invited on? Not only that, but later on, she had a Discord call in stream, and she invited all sorts of people friends, fans, spectators, and trolls. I mean, that's fine. But why were you including trolls and aunties on an open goddamn Discord call? Everything that this woman does is unpredictable. I'm making this video right now, and even I'm not aware of what she's plotting next or what bizarre adventure she'll find herself in. One has to ask why. Why does she do this for the money? Attention? Because it's all she has left? I have no idea. And I cannot help but armchair psychoanalyze everything that she does because it's just fascinating. One would tell her that she should take a few months off the internet to cool off. That's what she needs. To get away from the internet and to touch grass, see a therapist and work on herself for actual real this time. But it seems like that's not too possible for Michael. Maybe she can't because she needs the money. And because she's involved in a billion lawsuits, some of which seem frivolous. And she needs to keep paying those lawyer fees and whatever living standards she has right now. There's a certain hard to articulate grief in Michael, as if deep down she still wants and hopes to be as respected as she once was as Uruharusha. Maybe she just wants to relive the golden days, maybe she just wants peace. She would cosplay as Rusha. I understand taking back what was yours on your previous persona. In fact, I support it. There's a certain line where it becomes almost pathetic though, if the glory of your past is the seeming intention for that, even if it's not actually the case. 
There are others who do this and succeed, do this in a way that does not feel like they reminisce or grieve about their past. Keystone and Doki Burn, for example, using their old artists, taking small aspects of their previous persona and use it not as a sad callback to past glories, but to give it new meaning. Enhance upon it, take it for themselves, build something anew. This does not apply for Uruharusha, at least to me, it doesn't feel like it. And I know there is more than a significant chunk of people that think the same, and I think you can understand why. I know it's weird to speculate as to why she keeps doing this, or even how she feels, especially knowing that she's mentally ill. As I was making the script, I couldn't help but feel uncomfortable, even trying to word these thoughts out, and the uncomfortableness of it, I think, is the point. There is something deeply, disturbingly fascinating about her that one can't help but be uncomfortable but also be intrigued. I think that's why she's a lol cow and why she's a good one at that. No VTuber's personal affairs and explicit rise and fall has been recorded to this extent, not at the scale at least, and none of them is as stubborn, hardy, and has the ironclad will to survive as Michael. But of course, uh, we gotta give her credit, it's not all too bad. She has her fair share of good things here and there during the course of this year. For example, she got her very own successful 3D solo live event featuring new merch and a well-deserved General W. And in a moment of sincerity and appreciation from even Hololive fans who remembered Rusha fondly, she would engage with A-chan's graduation, a well-respected staff member of Hololive. She would even have a very successful meet and greet over in Hong Kong that actually had a decent turnout, showing that even despite her blackest nights, there still remains a very loyal and powerful audience waiting there that just wants to support her through thick and thin. And so far, she has been doing a good job catering to that audience and making sure that they are happy. In fact, she caters to this audience to an absolute insane degree that she pulled off quite literally the biggest marketing campaign of her life by saying that she was looking for a boyfriend. And you damn well know, you damn well know that people are gonna be doing their absolute goddamn best to line up for this. Look, I don't even need to translate this. You know what this guy is saying. It's what I said earlier about how she just seems to be doubling down on her GFE because this is the only sort of niche and content that she will ever be able to do. Something keeps people, including myself, coming back to Michael no matter what she does. She has this flair, this raw charisma. Her personality is way off the deep end, and I think that's why I'm still following her. Despite all the domestic abuse allegations, despite the craziness, despite everything, I still like Michael. I am invested in everything she does, both good and bad. Far beyond me just looking at her like a lol cow and just wanting to see the insane shit that she does. Far beyond me just wishing for her to get better. It's also me recognizing that Michael is the ultimate VTuber. The quintessential Menhera that all the caricatures of VTubers the media portrays. The GFE, the mental illness, the attention seeking, the train wreck of a personality, and the raw cuteness and the attractiveness that she exudes despite all of it. It's why people want to bait reactions from her, why people outside her community see her as this interesting specimen to watch and observe. It's like Nikocado Avocado or Boogie where they're mentally deranged and everyone sees them as this miserable slop of a person but with a faint hint of wanting them to genuinely get better and take care of themselves. Many VTubers like to depict their mental illness and tisms in ironic ways, but Rusha doesn't have that. She just is. All the good and the bad things about the VTuber, she has it. She embodies all tropes and stereotypes in all the right and the wrong ways. As I was making the script, Michael was yet again involved in another drama, where an alleged out-of-context clip from her twist cast was shared and framed as if she was making fun of Minato Aqua's graduation, a fellow Hololive member who literally broke VTubing's world record for having the biggest stream ever, to which she responded to by saying that she'll sue them for slander? 
I mean, sure, I guess, but at that point, how many goddamn lawsuits are you involved in? And do you really need that one money bleed again? But then, I also received word that apparently, she lost a part of her hearing due to stress. Also, that Nico Kado Avocado pulled off the most insane light Yagami internet plot twist I have seen in a minute. I rescind my statement. Michael is nowhere near Nico Kado, not even a light year. It's a bit of a mixed bag for Michael. Unless you've been there since the beginning, you can't tell how much harm she has inflicted both to people around her and herself. But to summarize, she is an alleged domestic abuser, she is trigger happy for lawsuits. Lots of people want to bait reactions from her including creators. People want to see what she's up to next for the wrong reasons. Allegedly, she joined one of the blackest corpos you could ever join for an unknown reason. She has no plans to take a break from the internet. And she's Superman Hera. Oh, and she's looking for a boyfriend. I believe this more than cements her lol cow status in Japan. When you think back to the days of Yonder, to the days of her doing cute innocent idol concerts and gaming with buddies and doing all these things, one kinda has to develop a sort of respect for how Hololive must have been able to tar wrangle her. The sheer amount of dust that they've must have managed to sweep under the rug would probably give anyone bronchitis. Or perhaps she wasn't always like this, or rather she was like this, but the circumstances around her wasn't as toxic as the one she finds herself in right now, and she's not reacting as violently. Many a former fan of Michael likes to think that Uraharusha, as they knew her, is gone. Many want to separate these two personas far away from the mess that she has become, and I understand that. Maybe that's part of the reason why the past life taboo was there to begin with. To make distinct phases in a VTuber's career, to make it easier for fans to separate the identities of their favorite creators. Hold up, hold up, update. I made this script a month ago, and throughout this month we had a few vital updates. That Mikuneko herself is getting a shit ton of death threats. That's not fun. But the major one is that she and Mafu Mafu mutually dropped their cases against each other, seemingly because both deemed it not worth it. Michael really wanted to emphasize that she is innocent in all charges except for the anonymous slander. And knowing what we know, it's kind of difficult to believe, personally, I don't know about you. Whereas Mafu wanted to drop it because it wasn't just worth all the time and money that was being wasted. And he would have wanted to write it through the very end if he wasn't advised to do so by his own lawyers. And because Michael wouldn't be punished anyway, even if he did win. So both just seemed to realize that, you know what? Their past grievances isn't worth their present losses. So they ended it. I mean, this whole thing probably costed them a lot of sponsors, money, and a shit ton of behind the scenes problems. Is this a good ending? Probably. Will Michael still be the same? Also, probably. Will this video be relevant six months from now? Also, also, probably. I know not what further awaits Michael's career, but what I do know is that she'll probably keep doing what she does and that she'll probably even outlast me. That hers is a journey filled with many bumps and surprises. Hell, she could pull off a Nikocado avocado and ultimately turn out that she's a super genius of a motherfucker. Uh, we don't know, right? And again, as a former fan, I want what's best for Michael. I really do. I want to see her grow and change as a person. Step out of the internet for a good couple months. I would want for the trolls to stop trying to get reactions from her so she can just actually improve on herself. I would hope that she's actually not as bad as Mafu Mafu makes her out to be. Although, I think I'm coping on this one. Let this video inscribe her tale. A yet unfinished attempt to tell her story. The story of a girl with many names. Uruharusha, Amemiya Nazuna, Koitoriya, Yoronoruki allegedly, and most importantly, Michael.